So, with your expertise, someone that's interested in starting their own um, store, mm -hmm. would you advise them to go the brick and mortar way or the click and mortar way? Um, <clears throat> it depends on it, it depends on how much money you have to start your business mm -hmm. and how much product you have. Because once again, in order to have a brick and mortar, you have to have some resid you have to have some capital because you have to buy products. You have to have stuff on the shelves. And you also have to have enough capital and have your financial structure set up enough to where if some stuff doesn't sell, because just because you buy a pallet of, of $12,000, you know, this pallet costs you $12,000, it might be six months to a year before you get all that $12,000 back. Yep. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yep. And even though you might mark it up, you, you, you know, you might get, but still, to make your actual money that you put in to buy this product, regardless of how, how much you mark it up, you know, however much your profit is, you still, it's not gonna, you're not going to get that money back in a week. That's okay. just not... <laughs> and the same see. thing as um, planting. Yeah. You're not going to be able to eat your fruit the next day. Exactly. You got to re yeah, reap it once yourself. Exactly. Some, some plants will be good. Most of your plants will be all right. Some plants you have to throw out. Some plants won't even grow at all. And that's just the way it is. And it's the same thing with products. So if you don't have that money to get your product, and that's just one. That's getting the product is one. Have enough money to buy the product. Then you have to pay rent. Uh -huh. Then you have to buy, you know, signage, marketing. You have to have money to, to upkeep of the store because you can. You're still looking raggly. You know what I'm saying? You have to upkeep of the store. You have to pay employees. I um, mean, once again, that we're going to that overhead thing. There's a lot of overhead that goes into a brick and mortar store. So if you don't have the money to do to keep up with that overhead, then I say no, don't do it. Just do online. But a lot of, you know, like I have a a friend now. I'm not going to say any names, but I have a friend now who you know started a clothing. I have several friends actually, you know, that do their clothing online and they sell through Instagram and Facebook, and that's cool. And they're not really seeing the results that they really want to see as far as people purchasing their their products and and you know because people think that oh I just opened up an Instagram page all the money is going to flow in no it is not you still have to take the time to build your brand yes. you still have to take the time to do those fundamental foundational things that once again will reap you the benefits on the back end. Just because you have a cute pair of pants and you post on Instagram does not mean that they are going to sell. That's great advice. So what are um, the fa the fundamental things that small businesses need to consider? Okay. Well, number one, building the brand. Bing. <laughs> number one. <Bing. laughs> number one, number one, building the brand. Um you know, if you build it, they will come. Yes and no. <laughs> so you have to build your brand. You have to have a good, solid brand. And then you have to figure out who your niche market is. I, <laughs> sto case and story in point. This was about, it was about eight years ago. This was, this was a while back. There was this pizza place. I can't think of the name. It opened up on Greenville. I can't think of the name. It was this pizza place, but it had a, you can tell that the name, I can't remember what the name was, but the name obviously catered towards Hispanics because it was a, a left of center name. It was a Hispanic name. Mm -hmm. And I went into the store just to kind of, you know, just to check them out, see a new restaurant on Greenville because, you know, I live on Greenville. And that, so went in and checked it out and ended up talking to the manager. Now, this manager, um, <laughs> this manager used to be a manager, a regional manager for Domino's. So he thought because he used to work for Domino's that he could go and open up his own pizza place and be just as successful. Yeah. So of course I gave him my card and said, "Hey, if you need to do some mailers. You're gonna do, you know, want to sit down and do some marketing. You know, I I'll talk." So he immediately took me back into his office and guess what his first question was? What? I need to figure out how to target people getting their um, welfare checks or getting their food stamps at the first of the month. I need to know how many Hispanics and blacks and da 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 are in this area. What? And I looked at him. Well, I mean, that's not a bad thing because once again, at least he understands 
who his demographic is supposed to be. Okay. But my first question to him was, you didn't do that research before you opened up this location? Because that's not a location for those type of people. No, it is not. Because of where I live, there are some Hispanics, but not the Hispanics you're trying to target. Right. <laughs> not the blacks you're trying to target. We don't get food stamps yeah. where I live. <laughs> and there might be some over there, but that's... Did you do that research before you opened up this location? So once again, you've taken all of this capital to open up a restaurant and to even come up with the name that's supposed to cater to that demographic, but you didn't even really do the general research to figure out if this was going to be the best location for that, even if your demographic is even in a five-mile radius of where you opened up your location. Yeah. Dumb. (laughs) So when he asked me that, I knew then that I wasn't going to be able to help him because you can't work backwards. It's like building a house and starting with the windows. You build the house, but you forgot to lay down the concrete foundation. Yeah. I can't help you. I'm not even going to pretend like. And honestly, if I was that type of business owner, I could have taken his money. I could have lied to him. I could have gave him, you know, sold him a, a fairy dream. But I like to go to sleep at night. So he wasn't my type of client. And mind you, three months later, that piece place closed down. And I don't know what you're talking about. Because <laughs> you know, right, so. they because they didn't they didn't last. So you gotta understand who who you're targeting, what your demographic is, because in order for you to understand your demographic, your marketing strategy has to cater to that demographic. Your approach has to be able to go after that set of people. And if you do not have the capital and another thing that businesses do not do is they do not set aside a marketing budget, which is one of the craziest and asinine things I've ever heard of. How the hell do you expect for people to find your business if you don't market yourself? Right. That's like that's like building a house and never having an open house. That's like this is what kills me. That's like you being on social media but your business page is private. I hate that. Oh. Why do you why is your business page private? That is retarded. That is retarded. That is retarded. It is. That's retarded. It's, it counter, it's counterproductive. Right. <laughs> and what I tell people all the time is, I, I still volunteer at a lot of events because I like to see what's going on mm-hmm. and actually get to like sit down with those that are coordinating that But event. that's smart. You learn by experience. Yes. You learn ding, by watching ding, and ding, observing. Ding, yeah. Ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the coordinators that I met at, at an art show, he actually said the same thing to me. And he's not even in Dallas, but every time he have an event in Dallas, he's here for two days and he's making well over $15,000 a mm-hmm. night because he invests in marketing. Mm-hmm. He invests in Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he spent about $2,000 in Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it works. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in L.A., my business, my art show is being promoted to people in Dallas. And it's getting us ready. And it's getting it steamed up for that uh, art show. Right. And he's he's brilliant at it. But you got to have the money. You got to have that capital to do that. And number two, I like the fact that you said you brought up customer service, too. Because he's big on this. He's big on making sure that. The artists that participate in his art shows, Mm -hmm. whatever they sell, they keep. Mm -hmm. And every time an artist sell artwork, they actually take a picture of it. And they celebrate their artist. That's That's customer service. That's nice. Yes. And we forget about that. Mm -hmm. You can't. You You can't. can't. You Mm -hmm. can't. You can't forget about that. That's, 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 once again, that's fundamental. Yeah. It's fundamental. Yeah. You can't forget about your customers. You can't take your customers for granted. Because I go back to my original point. Our customers are smarter now. <laughs> so if you're taking it for granted and they know you're, t- or if they know, or even if they have an inkling or feel like you're taking it for granted, they're not going to be your customer anymore. Yeah. 